whether it's a backside bigger flip, a big spin, or a 180, pivot always helps. You could either force your board to turn by sending your back foot forward, or let the physics do the job. Today we'll discuss the science behind backside pivots, and you're watching Why the Trek. You must have heard someone say, you should do tricks while moving. It's not just because tricks look better that way, there's a scientific reason behind this, especially in backside 180s. This is due to the law of inertia. When you are approaching, your body has the energy to move forward, and that energy remains throughout the trick, while the front wheels slow down by landing on the ground at an angle. This difference in speed between the nose and the body allows the board to turn even after the front wheels touch the ground. Let's analyze how to best use this principle according to the timeline. Starting from the foot placement, you may think you have to get your foot on the nose and swing the tail around like a tic-tac, but a pivot works differently. In this case, for example, you can see my front foot is barely on the nose. Instead, the majority of it is on the front track. So your foot and weight must be directly above the front track, which becomes a fulcrum when you land. As evidence, if you place your foot on the track and rotate your upper body, the board should also rotate around the fulcrum. You don't necessarily need to put your weight on the nose and try to get the tail in the air. So how do you get your weight on the front track? Just commit? No. The key to this is in weight distribution. You can see the front wheels move to the toe side by the time they reach the ground compared to when the board was going straight. This is because the board momentarily turns backside by stepping on the toe side of the tail. Consecutively, you have to move your weight to the toe side too. To do so, as I said in the previous video, have your front arm at around 10 o'clock when winding up. Then swing it out at 2 o'clock when you jump, and you can shift your weight to the toe side while rotating your upper body backside. Trying to jump to the toe side intentionally may cause your feet to lose contact with your board. So swing out your front hand and take your body weight with it. And now it's time to pop. When you do, the nose lifts and pushes your front foot up. Then tendons and muscles will try to return to their original state after being stretched. Use this force to push the nose down, so you don't have to push your front foot forward intentionally. If you don't believe me, try this experiment. Hold your toe with your hand, turn it inward around your knee, and release it. Then it should return to its original position. As the tendon absorbs the force the nose lifting, and the spring of the tendon pushes the nose back, it will naturally push the nose down to the ground. Now, Avoid over-popping or popping harder than necessary. Cause if you do, the spring of the tendon will not be able to absorb all the force of the nose. If you pop with the proper strength, your front foot should send the nose at 90 degrees backside. This effectively causes the friction between the ground and the front wheels. All that remains is to let the forward force acting on your body do the job. It should turn your board by the law of inertia. Just one more thing, having your eyes on your front foot upon landing may help you form a spinning axis. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.